Hi, in this lesson, we're going to look at how to view data in a database, okay? Recall that all data that's stored inside of a database is stored inside of these things called tables, all right? All data is stored inside of tables, so we need a way to be able to query these tables, and that's where the select command comes in. So let's get started. I opened up my browser here, and we're going to go to that same apex.oracle.com website, Go to sign in and log in with the credentials that you've created and hit sign in. And here we are in the console. So let's click on the SQL workshop and go to SQL commands section. And here we can type in some SQL to query the data. Okay, so just to do a quick review, uh, let me go back for a second. And I want to show you the object browser. Okay, remember a database has different types of objects. The one we care about the most is the table object, but it has many other objects, right? If you click on this um, drop down, you'll notice that there are so many different kinds of objects, but data is stored in tables. And the tables that we're going to be concerned with most in this course is the depth table and the employee emp table, right? Depth stands for department and EMP stands for employee table. These two tables come by default in uh, the Oracle database installation. All right, so wherever this database is installed, these two tables already contain some data in that database, okay? You can ignore all of these other tables for now, and we're gonna be creating our own tables later on in the course. But let's go back to the SQL workshop. You can uh, click on this down arrow and go to SQL commands. And it takes us back to that screen where we can type SQL. See, the SQL language is not case sensitive. So I can have select in lowercase like this, or I can have select in uppercase like this. And it should still work. So let me execute a particular select statement so you can see uh, what gets returned. So let's select from the employee table. That's EMP, that's the name of that table. And you need a semicolon at the end of every statement, okay? Um, this is not necessary all the time, but it will make your life a lot easier if you leave it there. And we'll go into details why that's required later on. But I selected this entire statement, and then I hit the Run button. And notice down here in the grid, we get the data that's residing in this particular table, okay? So let's deconstruct this SQL statement and understand what's going on. First of all, this entire thing, all of these commands together, it's considered a statement, okay? A SQL statement. And it's made up of uh, keywords. Uh, the first keyword here is the select keyword, okay? This is a reserved keyword in the SQL language, something you'll have to memorize, you'll have to know. So if someone asks you to uh, retrieve data from a table, right? To look at the data from the table, you'll have to use this select keyword. And um, you can't just use it without any other details. Like if I just get rid of everything else and just have this select and I hit run, this is not a valid SQL statement. It's saying missing expression. As a matter of fact, it's missing a lot of expressions, okay? Uh, what we need is we need to give the, a select statement at a minimum the select keyword requires um, a particular column, right? So some, I'm just gonna um, put some pseudocode here, uh, some column, all right? And the next command this needs is the from keyword, okay? So we have the select keyword, we give it a particular column or multiple columns as you'll see in a second, and then we need the from. In other words, you know, where are we getting the data from? and that's gonna be the table. So in our example, we have the emp table, but I'm just gonna um, comment that as, uh, you know, just table, just so it's readable. So we give the select keyword the columns that are needed to, to be queried, and then uh, the from keyword gets the particular table, or you, as you'll see later on in the course, we can select from multiple tables. All right, so at a minimum, this is what's required. If I want to select, for example, the job column from a particular table, let's say the emp table, select that and hit run, and notice that this is a perfectly valid SQL statement, 
right? The job column is the only thing that was retrieved. Now I just want to add one more thing regarding this SQL statement. This is actually a particular kind of SQL statement. To be more specific, this is referred to as a query, all right? We are asking the database for some information. We're not changing the data, we're not adding data, we're not modifying the database in any way. We're just asking the, asking the database, hey, give us this information that we are looking for. And that's essentially what a query is. Um, and the select statement, the select keyword here, is the main thing that makes this SQL statement into a query. All right, so just some jargon to keep in mind. Now I can select other columns, not just one. So instead of job, I can have also ename, all right, and select the whole thing and run. And as long as ename is in this table, it's going to execute and give us the data, all right? So here uh, we have the ename column also appear when we execute the statement. Now let's say you want to select all of the columns in the table. You don't want to specify every single column here in the list. That could be pretty tedious. For that, there is a nice little shortcut called star or asterisk. And this basically means, give me everything you got. It's a wild card. So it will return all of the columns. So if you select that and hit run, this will actually give us all of the columns in the result set. All right? And this is pretty handy when you want to do a quick analysis of the kind of data a particular table contains. Uh, you don't have to look through specific columns and, and put them here in the select clause. You can just put the star and get a quick snapshot view of what this table is all about. Okay, what are the different columns? What kind of data these columns contain? And so on. Okay, so a really handy thing to keep in mind. Let's go back to the ename and job. And also, I, I don't have to, since this is the only statement in this uh, window, I don't have to select it and hit run. I could just uh, have it unselected and hit run, and it will know that this is the only thing that it needs to execute. Now again, I keep, uh, I'll keep reminding you that uh, the SQL language is not case sensitive. In other words, we can just put job as lowercase and ename as lowercase as well. And the emp table, um, I could just you know make it like this. The select statement, I could do um, like that. As long as the spellings are correct, uh, this will be a perfectly valid SQL statement. So hit run, and notice that it's executing as expected in the order that we have specified, job and ename. Now typically, uh, statements like these are separated into two lines. It's just easier to read. We have select, and then the columns that we want selected from the table. And then we have this from statement on the next line, and uh, the table that we are wanting to select from. We can have multiple statements. We can have um, select job from. So let's hit run. And notice that it only executed this statement. Right? It only returned the jobs from the emp. So we have two statements here in this uh, window. We have this statement up here that uh, selects the job and the ename from the emp table. And we have this statement here where we're only selecting the job column from ename, uh, from uh, emp table. So both of these are, are individual SQL statements separated by this semicolon. The thing that really separates one statement from another is this semicolon. And again, I can have this from you know, on the second line, I can have spaces here just for ease of viewing. And we can make this lowercase as well as capital. So when I run this, I'm selecting this particular statement. Okay, I'm not selecting the whole thing. I'm selecting this particular statement. And when I hit run, it will only return the results for this statement. If I, for example, select both of these at the same time and hit run, take a guess as to what's going to happen. It's giving us a command not properly ended. It doesn't know what to do with this, right? Do you want us to, basically it's asking, do you want me to return the job and ename, or do you want me to return just the job, right? So if you give both of these commands, it does not know what to do with that. We need to specify a single command at a time, a command that ends with the semicolon statement, okay? 
All right, now let's uh, test out what you've learned. I'll give you a quick assignment. Uh, try this out on your own. The assignment is that I want you to query the department table. Okay, write a select statement to get data from the department table. But I only want to see the department name and the department location columns. Okay, I don't want to see the whole table. I only want to see those columns. So try that out on your own. Create that SQL statement, run it, test it, and then you can resume to watch my solution. All right, hopefully you had a chance to work on that. Let's treat this as an actual real-world problem. So your boss asks you to get this data. Um, what you can do is you first need to figure out where this department table is, right? or what it's called, really. I'm saying department, but the table's name could be something totally different. Let's go to the SQL workshop and go to uh, the object browser. We're going to browse through all the tables in this particular database to see if we find something that matches departments. And it turns out that there's a table called Dept. Uh, this seems pretty close to something that would contain department information. So let's query this table to see what data it contains. Let's go back to the SQL commands uh, area. And we can just uh, query, do a simple select statement. Select, like I said, select star earlier returns all of the columns in the table. So I can do select star from DEPT and highlight the whole thing and hit run and we should get the entire table. The problem was we only need to retrieve the department name and the department location. All right. So what you need to do here is you need to give the D name as the first column and the LOC as the second column. So select that and hit run and we should only be seeing these two columns being shown from the table. Let's look at some other things related to the select statement. So let's select from uh, employees uh, from the EMP table uh, to see some of the data here. I'm going to hit run and this will of course return all of the columns and basically return the entire table. Now as a default here, it's only showing 10 rows. We could change this to however many we need, uh, 15, 20 or so, and uh, that will return in the output. Hit run, and uh, this will return you know, uh, 14 rows. That's the total number of rows in this particular table. But I want you to keep in mind that just because we are only returning, for example, 10, Right? That does not mean that this query is not capable of returning the entire result set, which is 14 records. This is just a feature of the tool. Basically, this entire this statement is supposed to return everything from the EMP table. The only thing that's limiting the number of rows being shown here is this uh, drop-down, uh, which we can, we can change. Okay? So this is just sort of a visual uh, aesthetic that this application provides, just so that we're not... Uh, bombarded with you know bazillions of records they just want us to uh, quickly see the data in an easy fashion um, and that's what these that's why it's limiting just 10 rows all right now let's select just the job column and we're going to go into one aspect of seek of the select statement so i'm selecting job from emp let's hit the run button and this will only return us the data in the job column all right all 14 rows of the table are being returned because I've I've set the maximum rows uh, to be 15 and this table only contains 14 rows so it's returning the job column data all 14 of those rows and uh, notice that we have some uh, duplicates here we have the president and then manager is being repeated a couple of times salesman is being repeated a couple of times clerk is being repeated a couple of times the reason for this is because well we have uh, different people Right, different types of em different employees, and they have different job titles. Right, Blake is also a manager. Clark is also a manager. Jones is also a manager. All right, and Ward and Allen and Martin. These are these are all salesmen. Right, we have multiple clerks. But let's say if I only wanted to see uh, the distinct, right, the unique jobs in our company. I could just do this. I could do distinct. This is a special keyword in SQL, uh, the distinct keyword. I could do distinct and then type job. 
and this will only give me the unique values in the job column all right so hit run and first of all it's only going to return one column because i'm specifically stating job and then i'm also asking the distinct right select distinct job and it's going to return me the the different jobs that are in our company now very important to keep in mind that it did not return all of the 14 rows it's only returning five rows right because that's what we're, we're asking for only the distinct job if i get rid of this distinct and hit run then of course it's going to return me every single record um, in the table we're not giving it any specific filtering right if we add the distinct to this it's just going to return us five records each of the unique jobs that we have in our company